Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm thrilled to share with you my adventures in New York City, a city that never sleeps. I started my day in the heart of Manhattan at Times Square. This place is always bustling with energy and excitement, and I absolutely love the bright lights and giant billboards. Of course, no trip to Times Square would be complete without encountering some of the many street performers and costumed characters that call this place home. Did you know that's where they drop the ball on New Year's Eve each year since 1907? After taking in the sights of Times Square, I headed to a bagel to sandwich shop to try New York's staple, the Mighty Bagel. What's a trip to New York without trying a real bagel? I got the pumpernickel bagel with eggs, and it was absolutely delicious. Following my second cup of coffee at Starbucks, I made my way to Grand Central Station. As you can see, Grand Central Station is a beautiful and bustling place, with its famous clock tower and intricate details. One of the most iconic features of Grand Central Station is its famous main concourse, which houses over 40 shops and restaurants. You can grab a bite to eat, do some shopping, or simply take in the sights and sounds of the bustling station. It also hosts Grand Central Market, with over 30 vendors selling everything from fresh produce to artisanal cheeses to mouth-watering street food. I caught an uptown train from here to Central Park. Next up, I took a stroll through Central Park. This park is huge and has so much to see and do. One of the most iconic landmarks in Central Park is the Bethesda Fountain. This beautiful fountain is surrounded by lush greenery and is a popular spot for photos and picnics. Another must-see spot in Central Park is the Loeb Boathouse. I walked along the path and took in the beautiful scenery, and people watched for a bit. Another notable mention is Belvedere Castle. The castle itself has a rich history. It was built in 1869 as a romantic getaway for the wealthy. After my walk in Central Park, I ended up at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. This museum is massive and has an incredible collection of art and artifacts from around the world. I took a ghost tour and spent a few hours exploring the exhibits and learning about some of the world's most famous works of art. I would highly recommend the Ghost Stories Tour to visit the museum, as it will provide you with a unique perspective on the museum. Don't forget to go to their rooftop for an amazing view of Central Park and the NYC skyline. When I visited the rooftop, they were also showcasing the artwork by Petrit Halilaj. After the museum, I grabbed a cab and headed to Momofuku Noodle Bar at Columbus Circle. This place is famous for its delicious ramen bowls, and it did not disappoint. I ordered the chicken ramen, and it was absolutely amazing. After lunch, I did some shopping on Fifth Avenue. I popped into J. Crew and picked up a few new pieces for my wardrobe. Then I walked back to my hotel via Fifth Avenue, taking in the sights and sounds of the city. After resting for a couple of hours, I headed down to Greenwich Village to meet up with a friend. We grabbed dinner at an Indian restaurant that was absolutely delicious. The food was amazing. After dinner, I stopped by Junior's for cheesecake before heading back to my hotel. And as luck would have it, I bumped into Daniel Radcliffe on the way. Talk about a celebrity sighting. Good morning. After grabbing coffee at Starbucks, I hopped on the subway to explore Soho, a lively neighborhood renowned for its shopping, dining, and artistic vibe with its cobblestone streets. My main reason for visiting Soho today is to indulge in the famous cronut pastry at Dominique Gansel Bakery. This delicious hybrid of croissant and donut is a must-try for any foodie. Also, their cookie shot is the second best item on their menu. After satisfying my sweet tooth, I wandered through Soho's charming streets. In the afternoon, I made a quick lunch stop at Bagel Boss. I would definitely recommend this place. After lunch, I went down to the financial district. First, I visited Century 21, a renowned destination for designer clothes at bargain prices. Although the experience was slightly different post-COVID, the thrill of finding great deals remained the same. Next, I visited the remarkable Oculus to admire its architecture. After that, I visited the 9-11 Memorial and paid my respects at the memorial pools. Finally, I stopped at Brookfield Place before heading back to my hotel. For dinner, I enjoyed a delicious meal with a friend at Los Tacos One, savoring their authentic flavors and cozy atmosphere. The evening was spent people watching at Bryant Park, a tranquil oasis in the heart of the city, where I soaked in the vibrant energy of New York. Today, I'm heading to the Lower East Side. Russ and Daughters and Cats are the two most popular classic Jewish delis. However, I'm in the mood for a different breakfast experience, so I'm visiting the Remedy Diner. The diner has a cozy and intimate atmosphere with a retro chic decor that pays homage to the classic diners of the past. After that, I plan to visit Williamsburg. I walked across the Williamsburg Bridge, which offers fantastic Manhattan skyline views. Williamsburg is a must-visit destination for anyone looking for an authentic New York City experience, as it has a rich history and a lively atmosphere. There's excellent shopping, the Music Hall of Williamsburg for music lovers, a food market for food enthusiasts, and the best spots for taking photos of Manhattan. After walking around the neighborhood, I plan to stop by Martha Country Bakehouse for delicious pecan pie and chai. 
Next, I'll take the L train back to the 14th Street station. Before calling it a day, I visited Nordstrom Rack and Union Square Park, as heavy rainfall was expected this evening. I started my day with a delicious egg bagel and overnight oats. I stopped by Russ and Daughters for another bagel because, well, carbs are the best. My first stop was Vessel, a unique public art installation in Hudson Yards. Unfortunately, it's currently closed due to safety concerns, but I was able to snap some photos when it was open. The intricate honeycomb design provides a fascinating texture and tactility. As I walked away from Vessel, I continued on the High Line, an elevated park built on an old rail line. The views of the city were stunning, and I loved taking in the sights and sounds of the urban jungle. Along the way, I checked out some of the over 30 public art installations, including sculptures and murals. I exited the High Line at Chelsea Market, a popular destination in the meatpacking district. This seven-story building is home to a variety of shops, restaurants, and food vendors. Next door, I visited the Starbucks Roastery to snap some photos. After a morning of walking, I decided to grab lunch at Banter, where I indulged in a chicken sandwich with orange juice. Feeling sweet-toothed, I headed to Magnolia Bakery, made famous by Sex in the City. Their banana pudding is still my go-to treat. As a fan of the show, I had to pay homage to Carrie's iconic apartment building before continuing my stroll through my favorite neighborhood. feet were sore from walking so much, so I decided to head to Washington Square Park. It's a vibrant and iconic spot known for its beautiful architecture and lively atmosphere. The park is built on a burial ground and is said to be haunted. It was around 6 p.m. and I decided to pick up a sweet green salad and call it a night. I had an early start to my day, taking advantage of the closure of 6th Avenue for the weekend market. It was amazing to stroll along the usually busy avenue and watch the vendors set up their stalls. After my morning walk, I headed to the Brooklyn Bridge, one of NYC's most iconic landmarks. This suspension bridge connects Brooklyn and Manhattan, spanning an impressive 1.1 miles across the East River. As I walked across, I was treated to breathtaking views of the Manhattan skyline, including Empire State Building and Chrysler Building. Next, I explored the charming neighborhood of Dumbo. Where I visited the Time Out Market, a vibrant food hall and market in the heart of Brooklyn. With over 20 vendors and restaurants to choose from, I couldn't resist trying another delicious bagel. For even more spectacular views, I headed up to the rooftop to take in the sights of the Manhattan skyline with both Brooklyn and Manhattan bridges. As I wandered through Dumbo, I couldn't resist snapping a photo of the iconic Manhattan Bridge and Empire State Building. As I made some plans with my friend for lunch, I headed back to the train station to catch a train to Chinatown. As I was early for lunch, I walked around the Chinatown, a vibrant and bustling neighborhood with a rich cultural heritage, featuring authentic street food and landmarks and much more. I also walked around Little Italy, which is just a street away from Chinatown. For lunch, we went to Nyonya, where we enjoyed divine food and hospitality. I highly recommend this spot. After lunch, I returned to my hotel for a quick nap before heading out for dinner. This time, I took the train to West Village and visited Fairfax for dinner. The rain was coming down again, so we hailed a taxi back to my hotel. Our last day in NYC began with a visit to the one Vanderbilt building. We had booked our time slot online, and upon arrival, we found a long queue that moved very quickly. Most of the building is dedicated to office space, while the top floors house the Summit One Vanderbilt observation deck, divided into different sections. The first part, Rise, includes three high-speed elevators that swiftly transport visitors from the Grand Central Terminal level to the observation area 1,020 feet above ground in less than 50 seconds. The reflecting mirrors offer great photo opportunities.
After taking like 1,000 photos, we were left the building. After that, I went to Levain Bakery, a popular spot for cookie lovers like me. Have you ever tried their signature cookies? They're gooey, chewy, and utterly divine. I grabbed a few treats to fuel up for the rest of my day. From there, I made my way to Little Island, a brand new park built on a man-made island in the Hudson River. The views of the city skyline are simply stunning, and the park itself is so peaceful and serene. I took some time to relax and enjoy the scenery. However, if you want the best view of the Little Island, you should walk next door to the Pier 57 rooftop park that gives you a bird-eye view of the park and the Manhattan skyline. Finally, I ended my day with dinner at Delmonico's. The interior of Delmonico's is a step back in time, with its ornate chandeliers, dark wood paneling, and antique furnishings. We started with burrata for entree, then had lobster and salmon for mains. We finished off with a baked Alaska, completing this delicious meal. And just like that, my time in New York was over. Thanks for watching, and until next time, 